I'm glad to be here. And it, I, fl I really did. I really flew in the, um, tonight. I flew in tonight and it took nine hours by jet. I couldn't believe nine hours. They threw us off the plane in um, Salt, Lake, Salt Lake City, Utah. That was some kind of engine problem. They made us take uh, one of these local airlines. What is it, Frontier Western? Oh, the worst. It made eight stops in Nevada. It was picking people up at their house. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and it's my fault because I changed planes. I don't like to fly. I'm nervous. And I changed planes because I saw something so frightening. As I was getting ready to board the plane, I saw a nun buying flight insurance. <laughs> I mean, that's like being wheeled into an operation. You see a surgeon with garlic around his neck going. <laughs> I could never go to the moon. How do they go to the moon? You know, a lot of people complain. They said that the moon shot, you know, $22.5 billion. They said it was a waste of money. You know, it should have been used for other things. So did you see what they did on the last moon shot? They tried to save the day. They said it was worth it because they found orange dust on the moon. You know what that was? It was Tang. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm a bachelor, and I'm not that crazy about dating, because you girls get weird when you go out on dates. Oh, no, you really do. I don't know what happens after you leave the house, you know? Like, girls are always on a diet, except when you take them to a restaurant. <laughs> and you can never tell a girl, men don't ever make the mistake of telling your girl that she gained weight, you know? Don't make that mistake. Tell her she looks good in bigger clothes, anything. Don't ever tell her. <laughs> because you can't be honest on dating, right? You can't. Dating is not an honest thing. Like on a date, the girl, oh, you're just taking me out for my body. No, I want to feel your brain. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to, look, I'm not picking on you girls. I really, I think you're great, especially California girls. You're great looking at the cosmetics and the styles. They're, oh, they are. The best looking girls in the, in the country are in California. And I like everything except one thing, the platform shoes. Have you seen those platform shoes? Really, they're like this. No, sometimes like that. Really, you take out a girl, she's beautiful, tall, 5'10", you get married, get her in bed, she's 2'6". <laughs> and men are the same way. Men do the same thing for the ego. Like, you ever see what they have for bullheaded men now? They have this hair transplant. They sew the hair into your head. Have you seen it? Can you imagine you're out on a date, there's a thread hanging? And she wants to be nice. Here, honey, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> and you ever have this happen to you on a date? I hope I'm not the only person in the world this happens to. Let's say, like, tonight, all right? You're out on a date. You know, it's real nice. You take the girl home. You're sitting on a sofa. You have your arm around your girl. And the lights are low. The music's perfect. Everything's just right. And you're sitting with your arm around your girl. And you take a deep breath. And there's a whistle in your nose. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? All of a sudden, you hear <laughs> Do you know something? I have the answer to air pollution. I wrote the government. They haven't answered yet. I think we're approaching air pollution and smog all wrong. We're trying to decrease it. What we should do is increase it. That is, make the air pollution particles so big they can't fit into your nose. <laughs> right? Come on, at least we have a chance you'd see it coming. You know, watch it, Harry, air pollution, boom. But I can breathe in L.A. I don't know why I can breathe out here. And I'm not afraid out here in the streets. I know crime's bad. A friend of mine in L.A. here told me, he said, look, remember one thing. Don't ever park your car in a dark street here. They'll steal your hubcaps. I'm from New York City. They steal kneecaps. <laughs> I saw a man on the subway. Actually, was on a platform in New York a few weeks ago. He obviously had his wallet stolen, see? And the thief was making his getaway down the platform. And this man said something that I know I would have said, and probably most of us would have said. And I never realized how dumb it is until I heard him say it. As the thief is running away, this man said, Hey, come back here! <laughs> and they're telling us crime isn't so bad in New York. Did you see that latest survey? Not the one that was stolen, the other one? <laughs> According to this survey, I couldn't believe it. According to the survey, there are 147 muggers in New York City per person. <laughs> it's a horrible victim shortage. Even King Kong refuses to come back. Huh? <laughs> By the way, I want you to go see King Kong if the movie ever comes around and look for something that I don't remember seeing when I saw it as a kid. It's so dumb. Remember the classic scene where King Kong, the giant ape, is on top of the Empire State Building, right? 
and he's holding on to Fay Ray, the beautiful blonde in his hand, 120 stories above the ground. You know what she says to him? I couldn't believe it. She says, let me go. <laughs> okay, lady. Dumb. I mean, if I were in her place, I would have been saying things like, ooh, I dig apes. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but New York is, I'll tell you something, the King Kong climbed up there today. No one in New York could pay any attention to him. Hey, look at that ape. Yeah, and we're late for lunch. What do I need an ape? For? <laughs> Nothing bothers New Yorkers. You ever see them? They're crazy. You ever see New Yorkers? What's the matter? They won't collect the garbage? We'll eat it. <laughs> I mean, you can walk down a street in New York City, and I actually saw this happen, and you can see manholes blow right out of the street. Boom! And a typical New Yorker will go, heads. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.